Good morning and welcome to day eight of our second annual WSOP Daily Spaces coverage. I'm Sherry Pliskota, a.k.a. Peaches, and my co-hosts this morning are Dark Angel Donna Morton and Maureen Blowklinger from Switzerland. So good morning, ladies. I'm trying to get Maureen up here, so press that request in the bottom left, Maureen, please. Hey, Donna. Hey. How's things? It's a little bit better today, so uh, some of us, namely namely me, got a little sleep, so I'm definitely feeling better today. Thank you. And uh, (laughs) my other co-host, Brian Pincus, should be joining us shortly. I want to give many thanks to Elevator Results, who's been our sponsor since day one. If you need a tailor-made workout plan to help you lose weight or gain weight, Elevator Results can design that plan. Follow them on Twitter and check out their website at elevatedresultspt.com. Please be reminded that you can find our um, recordings of our spaces, including our daily coverage and our interviews on my YouTube channel at Sherry Pliskoda 9212. Please subscribe. Um, Brian, I do see you, and I sent you a co-host invite. There he is. Perfect. Hey, Brian, how are you? Good morning, Sherry. Wasn't sure if you could see me there. Thank you. I appreciate that uh, because, you know, we all know that it glitches here in the basis community. But I will tell you, your microphone sound is horrible. Awesome. (laughs) I'll, I'll get that fixed. Okay. Um, I'm going to just keep moving along because I see Kathy Chang is in our audience right now, and we're going to have an interview with her just shortly. But first, we wanted to get all of our daily business out of the way so we can get into that, what I know will be a fun interview. Uh, Just an update on our uh, Spaces Fantasy League. I made a tweet a few moments ago. Um, There has been a change at the leaderboard. I'm going to pull it up real quick so we could just look at it. What the uh, hell? Real Fats in first? Yes. Real Fats is in first with his team, Lady Gaga. I'm not having this. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to let his tires down. (laughs) I'm sorry? I'm going to let his tires down. (laughs) (laughs) Team Dinkers, which is Modfather's team, is in second place. I'm just happy my team, the Coffee Breakers, is in fifth place because we were in last place. And now that is Brad's team of the um, Seapol, Team Seapol. So I'm just happy I'm no longer in last place at this time. Hopefully we will remain out of last place. But... T um, owner Team Fats, his team is in first place this morning. Any comments, Brian? He may be working on that. Go ahead. I'm still working on it. No worries. No worries at all. Any comments on that, Donna or Maureen? Yeah, as I said, I'm going to let his tires down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to just cut it in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to disconnect his battery too. So he's stuck. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Maureen, good morning. Hi, good morning, ladies. Good morning, Brian. Can't wait um, for today's show and can't wait to have Kathy on. I know. I'm excited, too. She's such a crusher in the mixed game and, well, any game she plays, let's face it. And I'm looking forward to getting to know her better. And, Brian, I'm just going to tell you, I don't know. I think the spaces gods were in, in Brian's favor la- yesterday morning. Because I know he doesn't know this, but us three ladies were talking in a chat yesterday morning because all three of us were like on edge. We had shit going on in our real lives that were kind of, you know, sending some of us over the edge, namely me. And um, we we joked about how um, sorry we felt for Brian. You know, it was going to be a horrible experience for him. And, of course, I came back with the comment, don't worry, he lives with women only, so he's used to us. And we, yep, You're too 100%. It was pretty funny. We were like, oh, poor Brian. He's going to have to put up with all three of us today. But anyway, it was a great show. And thank goodness Brian was okay. 
and it all worked out fine. Now, let's get to, um, I'm going to give Brian a few more minutes. I'm going to bring up something else what, while he's working on what he's working on. If you've been hanging around with us, you've heard me, you know, on my soapbox about all American Dave's um, being cut from providing food services to the players and staff at the WSOP. Um, for those that may not know, Dave provided a unique service, and we're not going to get into the weeds of everything that happened because we've we've bet, beat that dead horse already. So basically, a player could buy food, a food package or deposit into an account with Dave. And Dave's food truck would be parked outside of the Rio in the parking lot. And a player could go onto the app and place an order for food and it would be delivered hot, so to speak, to their table. The, uh, when they moved the WSOP over to the horseshoe, they didn't have an answer to replace such great service that Dave provided. And food became a challenge at the Horseshoe Parish, Parish location. As we've talked about several times over the last year, in hopes that the WSOP, Caesars Properties, would somehow replace that service with something just as good or better. Well, look at here. The WSOP has stepped up to the plate and more importantly, Caesars, and they did present us with a replacement this year. Let's be clear, the replacement does not deliver food to your seat, but hopefully one day it will. So let's discuss what that does, what they're going to do for us this year. First, it's called Caesars Eats Pickup. According to their ad, and this is what their ad says, break the time hack. Order food ahead of time, pick it up, and take it back to your seat. The pickup is located next to the FedEx Business Center at Paris slash Horseshoe. I was so excited to see this tweet on the WSOP site because food is has been an issue. And so any comments on this uh, topic? Go ahead, Maureen, <laughs> or Donna, go ahead. I think it's good it's finally been addressed. Uh, it's such a shame for Vegas, Dave, as we've said before. But I think hopefully moving forward, at least they've started listening, which is a good thing, in my right. opinion. Well, and let's face it, you know, we really couldn't expect that replacement, in my opinion, last year because, you know, even the last two years, because they're just trying to, you know, figure out the horseshoe location, how it's all going to work in Paris. And, you know, so I'm just happy that they, like you said, um, listened or they may have already been planning it and it just now has come to fruition. So I'm really excited about this. Go ahead, Maureen. Yes, I'm, I'm scanning it now because I want to see the food options. Um, right. It looks like here, I have it up here. You can order from Bobby's Burgers. Sandwiches, Guy Savoy, um, Cafe Bella Madeleine, Gordon Ramsay Steak, Guy Fury's Flavor Town. So it looks like all the restaurants from Paris you can order at. And I know it's one step in the right direction, but again, I need more healthier choices, right? Like where are the salads? Where are like the wraps? fresh food, um, you know, the smoothies. So that was the advantage of having American Dave's. So I yeah. wish, you know, there would be another more healthy option in the food court at one point that we could order from. And yeah, I totally agree. Go just, ahead, Brian. Just to add to this, um, they, they've had this, um, but the problem is, in addition to what Maureen's saying, um, you're still dealing with the food services, I believe, at Paris and Horseshoe. And as I tweeted last week, somebody, they need to find somebody new to run this thing. Um, the poker kitchen, I think, is an even bigger disaster um, than the food services, mainly because I think that that comes through the convention side versus I'm not yeah, sure that the restaurants are separate. And so, like, honestly, um, what was that fire festival that they had a couple years ago? 
I don't know if you saw the documentary on that. <laughs> it, it looked it looked like that, man. Like um, it's a big disappointment um, for for that. And something that I know that I've I've spoken with them about, and that they don't seem to have a lot of control over, or really any control over. Um, it's not likely that the 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 that that type of arrangement with like somebody outside will will ever happen again as long as it's located where it's located which i don't well, expect it to move right so and that's because um, the unions right so let's just get that on the table and we beat that horse to death in yeah the past, yeah so we're so not I don't gonna know go what down the solution that, is, sherry um you know uh, may, may, maybe it's maybe it's just somebody people recommending the one thing that you can eat there and like we've talked about bringing your own stuff so anyway right. and i'm just going to say that i'm hopeful i see this as a positive great step first step and hopefully um as maureen suggested we need some more healthier choices will become in place because i'm sure that folks are going to be voicing that opinion to the wsop this year and, uh, you know, yes. let's not forget to compliment the fact that they have already are getting this in place for us. And now let's hope they take it to the next step, maybe next year. Yeah. And keep, keep re re you know, respectfully requesting and, and making them aware of the problem. Right. Um, right. don't, don't do it in a, in a, you know, jerk way, but, but make sure that your voice is heard that this is what I'd like. This is what's not happening and these kind of things. I will say when I did use that last year, um, it did work good in term. And, and this year, I think there is a little bit of a difference. Last year, you had to go to the actual restaurant. This year, they're delivering it to that this little kiosk area. Um, and, um, you know, so so it worked good. Your food was, you know, your food was pre-ordered and available when you needed it which is kind of the biggest thing you know so um but maureen's right on the money we need some different food options and uh and i think i'm preaching to the choir well and that's okay and i just want to mention uh tj jerk jerkowitz jerk I think it's Jerkowitz. Um, find him on Twitter. If somebody wants to pin his Twitter to the chat here, I'd appreciate it. Um, he is def he's in health and fitness, and he is definitely definitely offering some healthy choices, some healthy wraps. I've not looked uh, at his full menu, but I heard that he is definitely offering some healthy wraps and he has some other items so definitely look him up on twitter i want to say that he's delivering to or he has something set up or he's meeting you outside of the horseshoe i'm not sure um i've just been a little bit busy to really dive into that so if anybody knows let me know if somebody wants to quickly quickly look it up and give us an update that would be great too I think we need to go ahead and get on to the daily coverage of what's going on at the WSOP as well as around town because we have a crusher with us, Kathy Chang, who's going to join us in just a few moments for an interview. And so I want to have all of this, uh, what do we say, technical stuff, um, daily coverage stuff out of the way so we can uh, fully give our attention to Kathy. So. Event number five was the Mystery Millions, and yesterday they went into flight, I'm sorry, day two, and today will be day three, and only 18 are moving on to day three. First place is going to get $1 million. Second place, 536000 A min cash is $1,318. For the 2,512th place winner because there were 18,409 entries into this tournament. Jake Brown is our chip leader with 76 million. Not too far behind is Carson Richards with 74 million. Michael Miller has 68 million. Christopher Battlefield has 59 million. 
um, Eugene Tito has 55 million. So anything's going to happen with that tournament, that's for sure. And 18 are moving on to today, which starts at 1 p.m. day three. Any comments from anybody on that sub subject? Not me. Keep, let's right. keep moving through let's this. Keep, let's keep going. Uh, event number 10. Was, oh, sorry, uh, Sherry. Can I interject? Yes, 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 um, yes. So, so for the millions, um, as you know, both one million bounties were pulled yesterday. So I know that there was some disappointment in the community on Twitter or X um, that the one um, recipient of the one million dollar prize um, wasn't that static. He compared wasn't that to happy was he and yeah I, and i want to know um again i haven't you know people are surprised when i say this year i just haven't had time to dive into stuff like i normally do and dissect but i got uh two feelings on the subject matter people um thought he did not react like happy surprise yelling and screaming because he's already a millionaire and the other part of that was He's not happy because he owes people money. So which is it, Maureen? Yeah, I'm not sure. But let's just congratulate him. It's Valentin Shabalink from Ukraine. And then the, our second million dollar bounty winner was DJ Buckley. Um, DJ Buckley um, seems to be the all time highest cashing player on the MSPT tour. Um, so congratulations to both of them for the one million dollar polls. And look, we're going to be happy and screaming for them because, look, they were instant millionaires yesterday if they weren't already millionaires. So thanks for that update, Maureen. And listen, this is what we're going to do. All um, You guys, all three of you turn on your microphones. And after I'm done with an event, anybody that's got comments, just jump in. So event number 10 is the 10K Omaha High Low. There are four players remaining going into day four, which starts at 1 p.m. today. First place is going to get 40, 426K, second 284K, third 197K, and fourth at 140K. Our friend Scott Sievers in first place, and he has 3.9 million in chips. Jonathan Cohen has 3.6 right. million in chips. Kelvin Anderson has 2.5 million in chips. And Paul Zapula has 1.6 million in chips. And again, that is something that, you know, that those chips stacks are close enough that it's going to be anyone's game. So go ahead. I love uh, I love Scott Seaver. He's he's hilarious. Uh, uh, yeah, always, Scott Seaver, uh, definitely. I always crack up at him. I I was at the uh, final table of the WPT. I think it was a cha WPT championship. He won, and I've never figured it out, Sherry. I'm sitting behind his friends and family, and all of his friends had this chant. They're going and going and going and going, and they all knew exactly when to stop, but his dad had no idea. So his dad, every time <laughs> we keep going, and I'm just in there. I'm not saying anything because, like, I, I don't know when to stop. I was with his dad, so I've always wondered, how did they all know when to stop? That's funny. Nobody sent dad the memo. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to event number 11, which was the 1500 Badooki tournament. There are 10 remaining going into day three, and the start time is at 1 p.m. Tobias Le uh, Leakness of Norway is at the top of the chip stack, so 2.25 million. Dave Prosiak of the U.S. has one a 2.1 million. And they will restart today at 1 p.m. First place is going to get 129,000, second 84,000, third 56,000, with a min cash at the 74th place position. Place, excuse me, uh, we'll get 3K. Any questions or comments on that? Moving right along, event number 12 is the $1,500 No Limit Six Handed Tournament. There were 2,000. 526 entries, and there are 197 going into today. Prize pool is 3.3 million. A first place is going to 
take home 439,000, second 293,000, and third 210,000. A min cash for this tournament is the 379th place for $3,006. Quinn Sao of China has a chip stack and is the leader with 966,000. John Gordon of the U.S. has 942,000. Michael Miller of the U.S. has 860,000, 67,000 um, in chips. Any questions or comments? Moving right along, event number 13 is the 10K Dealer's Choice. There is a hundred. There was 124 entries. There are 68 rem remaining. The prize pool is 1.153 million. And George Alexander is sitting on the biggest stack with 277k. Brian Bruner has 246k. Michael Martinelli has 234k. Eric Lundgren has 217k. Nick Schumann has 100. 84K and uh, notables are Dan Zach at eighth place as far as chip stacks are concerned at 177K. Robert Mizraki has 173K and our crowd favorite, Phil Ivey, has 171.5K in chip stacks. Any questions or comments? No, apart from I'm driving. No worries, hon. Oh, I see Brian had to drop down. He must have been having issues. Let me invite him back, and we will keep it moving. Maureen, anything uh, you'd like to bring up that happened or, you know, concerning any of that? No, only I only had insight on those bounty polls. Apart from that, um, X has been a little bit quiet. It really has. Isn't that kind of nice? That means it's a positive, I think, that uh, things are going well and uh, all things are quiet. No news is good news, as my mom used to say. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the Hall of Fame inductees for a moment. Um, 2002's inductee, one of them was Lyle Berman, the co-founder of Grand Casinos, a company that sought to create gambling establishments outside of Las Vegas and in Atlantic City. Berman is the chairman of the board of the WPT, and he was a victim of the massive Ponzi scheme of Bernie Madoff. Just a little history there. In 2002, Johnny Chan was also inducted. Chan owns a fast food franchise in the Stratosphere Hotel. In 2007, Chan launched an online poker room, ChanPokerOnline.com. It closed in 2008. In 2003, Bobby Baldwin was inducted. In 1984, Bobby was named president of the Golden Nugget. In 87, he made he was made the head of the Mirage. In 98, he became the president of the Bellagio. There were some other title changes along the way, but in 2018, Bobby retired from the corporate life behind the walls in a casino. In 2004, Barry Johnson was inducted. Doyle said the following about Barry. What I admire most about Barry is not Barry, the great poker player, but Barry the man. He is deeply religious and devoted family man who has always been a gentleman at all times. Very nice words by Doyle about a friend. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Kathy um, to join us. She may be having some issues as well, so stand by. Um, anybody want to do some filler time? I'd appreciate it. Okay, Coca. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Sherry. Um, it, did, were you saying were you saying Barry Greenstein there? The no, Barry time? Johnston. Oh, Barry Johnston. Okay, that's cool. Uh, you know, you were mentioning Bobby Baldwin. I, I remember, like, I think it was my first main event. There was a pot that got messed up at his table. And he's, like, almost being, like, the floor guy there. He's, like, the floor guy was messing it all up. Finally, the he stood up and he's like, no, no, 
you got to do this. And he's like moving all the chips around and everything. I love it. Because it's so funny. I love it. And who's going to argue with him, right, Kathy? Yeah, exactly. I sent you an invite to come up as a speaker. If you would just press the request button in the bottom left corner of the space, it really will speed up the process. And we'll get you up here and enjoy your company. Okay. And I have to ask Brian, didn't we have some homework for Brian? He was yes. going to try to. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, no. Busted. <laughs> This is just like school. Busted. Well, oh I can't gosh. believe you didn't wrong. tell them about my phone call to you. <laughs> wrong day for homework, Sherry. <laughs> Somebody didn't go to sleep till 2 a.m. And Brian's being very oh nice and not telling you guys that I talked to him yesterday. And I was like, Brian, um, 859. Um, just a moment, Kathy. I was like, Brian, 8.59 a.m., yeah. not 10.15, not 8, uh, 10, 9, 50, <laughs> but 8.59 <laughs> in the morning, bud. You know I love you. Um, let's welcome Kathy to the panel. Hey, Kathy. Hi. Thanks for having me. Well, we're glad you can uh, join us this morning. And I just want to say a few things about you before we get started uh, with the drill, as they say. Our guest resides in L.A., but plays poker in both L.A. and Vegas often. She is definitely a mixed game specialist. Kathy Chang has already cashed 15 tournaments in 2024, including three first place finishes and her first circuit ring. Her win of the horse event at the WSOP circuit event at Commerce in May. On May 8th, she came in second in the Run Good Toe event. On May 9th, she won the $500 triple draw event at the Run Good series. And on May 14th, she won her ring. What a May this crusher had. Kathy has $387,031 in total live earnings on Hendon Mob with a best live cash of $24,400 for her third place finish in the Liz Flint Spring Poker Classic in April of 2017. Our guest's first entry on the Hendon Mob was in 2009. She has a hundred and 89 caches listed. She has finished first in a tournament 27 times, second 14 times, third 16 times, fourth 12 times, and fifth 11 times. Or out of 189 caches, Kathy has finished in the top five 42% of the time. Wow. Talk about a crusher. We welcome you this morning, Kathy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me, Sherry. Wow, that 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 sounds like way more than what I've been doing. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you that when I started looking at Trend Mob, I was like, okay, why aren't there more articles? And there are a lot of articles out there about you. But I was like, why aren't there more articles? This is a specialist. This is a killer, a crusher in the mixed game category. And she should be sharing the wealth of information, let alone what I know you've had some amazing experiences in poker that should be shared. So I'm really excited. You, um, you know, we've been going around and around for a couple of weeks trying to find a day that you can come on because you know, it's WSOP time and you've got to play some poker. And so I'm so happy you join us. And I'm going to ask you if you can tell us how you started playing poker. Okay. So I started playing poker the first time I, I, we were just watching ESPN one day and they had the 2008 main event final table. And that's the first I really learned about poker or the World Series of Poker. And I was instantly intrigued by by that. And so, you know, I, I just uh, was looking around to see what was in our community. We had a local league. We had some charity poker events at the local event centers. And so I started playing some of those. And I did fairly well. We were just playing for prizes. And it was just just for fun. And then somebody mentioned that maybe I should go try playing at the casino. 
So I really didn't even know where the casino was, but I figured out where the bicycle casino was. And as you mentioned, that was my first little cash. I mean, I had a little min cash. I didn't even know like the bubble situation, but somebody had mentioned to me, oh, they have an all in at the next table over there. And if you just fold, you're going to to cash. And I'm like, okay, I'll fold. I can do that. And so, you know, I was, I was proud of my little min cash of whatever it was, $255. And they said, oh, you're going you're gonna to be on Henda Mob. I'm like, what's that? And they said, oh, there's a, a record of, of your tournament caches. And so that appeared. And I'm like, wow, this, this sounds fun. I'm on the board now. And so, yeah, let me see if I can get a few more of these Henda Mob results. And so that kind of got me started on this whole poker journey. Well, I think that's a great story. And I I love that you explained how you stumbled down the information while you were playing. It was, uh, you know, some people, when I say to people, you know, I'm going to go play that pineapple tournament. I just know kind of the basics about t- pineapple, but the $50 buy-in is wor- it's worth the lesson. Like I'm going to get a lesson in pineapple. It's not about I'm going there to win the tournament. I'm going there for a $50 lesson in pineapple. So to hear that you were getting those lessons as you played, I, I love that because I think it's important for people to realize that when you go play poker as a beginner, it's really more about the lessons you're learning than it is about you winning while you're there, I think. What do you think? Yeah, that's that's a lot of it. I mean, I'm a recreational player. I play for fun. And when I went to that bicycle tournament, I really had no expectations. I mean, all I really knew was that aces were a good hand. I didn't know about bet sizing or position or any of that. And um, when I was there, I just met some people and I happened to meet some ladies and they said, oh, there's a lips tournament coming up. And so I started playing some of the lips events and I thought that was a nice introduction in a a friendly environment and it was comfortable for beginners. And so they had at the time the California State Ladies Championship down at Ocean's Eleven and Oceanside. And so I went down there and that was a couple hours from my home. And I happened to win the California State Ladies Championship. And that was really exciting. That was my first big win. So then now all of a sudden I have a bankroll of $5,000. And it also included a seat to the Ladies WSOP Championship the following year. So I had no idea about actually attending the WSOP. However, now I have a seat. And so I went there and I did cash in the first ladies WSOP championship that I played in. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I do want to give out a little shout out to Lupe Soto, who I have said many times in in the past, I give her so much credit because many of us would not be here at the poker table without the endeavors that she started long ago, 20 years ago. She started, you know, promoting ladies tournaments and making sure she puts some on the schedule at local casinos in LA, California, Texas. Um, You know, I know she's had them in Florida and of course, Las Vegas and, you know, shout out, shout out to Lupe to be the pioneer that helps you know, helped all of us get to where we are in the poker world today. And her group is LIPS, L-I-P-S, Ladies International Poker Series. And she has series all over. And she is celebrating her 20-year anniversary. So she's holding meetup games and tournaments all over the world. And it's awesome. So hats off to Lupe Soto. Yes, I I definitely give her a lot of credit for that. I mean, that was really the starting point of of my playing poker. And I really appreciate she's having a ladies week in Vegas um, later this month. And so there'll be a different ladies event at each of the casinos later this month. And I, I plan on participating in some of those as well. 
Well, and I do too. And I, I know Maureen will as well. And as that approaches, we will definitely, you know, last w- year we did as well. We covered it um, and gave out the information so that, you know, our ladies and our men can stake ladies into their favorite women's tournament. So let's move on to um, which game of poker is your favorite? Okay, that is a really great question, and it seems to be changing as the years go by. Obviously, I started with No Limit Hold'em, as most people do. Um, So what happened was I was playing at the Bicycle Casino, and I happened to meet somebody, and we got to talking, and it appeared that this person was quite a professional player, and... um, it turned out to be Robert Turner. And so he invited me to to tag along with him on his uh, Omaha cash games. And so I I started playing the 612-08 cash games at the bike. And I realized that this was something that could be really fun for me. And I started playing 08 tournaments. And so that got me started into the whole world of mixed games. So I do blame Robert Turner for my love of mixed games. Well, and I am a, you know, Robert is a friend of mine and he'll tell you, you know, he has talked to um, me about you and how um, you guys kind of hung out at the poker table and he encouraged you, you know, along your way. But I, he'll be the first to tell you how many times I've told him I hate that game that he brought to Vegas. <laughs> uh, and honestly, if I could, you know, I, and I promised him that I was going to start playing it. I have only played it a few times. And actually one of the times I played it in a, in a bar league, I actually won the tournament, which is hilarious because I really don't like the game. But anyway, um, we are a big fan of Robert Turner around here. And I'm so glad that um, the two of you are friends because he's awesome. And I love his storytelling abilities. And I'm sure you do too. Yes. So, you know, Omaha became quickly my favorite game and I played a lot of that. And then I, I realized that Omaha was a part of horse. And so I thought, well, that will be my next step to learn the stud game so I could play in horse. And the first time I played stud was at commerce and I really didn't know how to play stud, but Thanks to a poker player who, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, but he gave me a five-minute quick tutorial on how to play stud. And I found myself playing stud with all the commerce regulars. And it it was a two-day event at the LAPC. And so I found myself, I bagged that stud tournament. And so on the way to my day two of the stud tournament, I happened to run over a piece of metal on the five freeway and I got a flat tire. And so I was running late to day two of the stud tournament, but fortunately I found myself at a local tire company and I was wearing my a WPT t-shirt and he asked me if I'm a poker player. And I said, yes, in fact, I'm on my way to day two, and if you could, you know, hurry it just along. And he said, oh, yeah, I'm a poker player, too, and I'll get you right out of here. And so he got me a replacement tire. I got to the casino, and I ended up in third place in that stud tournament. That is awesome. I love that so much. Poker is worldwide, isn't it? Um, all right. You mentioned the five-minute stud lesson. Can you give us a little glimpse of what that conversation was like? You know, I honestly don't even remember, but I mean, I think overall in what I have learned from many people and and all my experiences, you know, good starting hands and position, I mean, start with big pairs. I, I don't even remember what he said, but whatever he said was helpful. And so that's what I've been what I started with and somehow it got me to, to third place. Um, really though, what has helped me the most is that I met John Cernuto 
And you have had John Cernudo on your spaces, and he is the master of, of mixed games. Uh, of course, he has the most caches of anyone. And I figured if I was going to learn, I was going to learn from the best. And John has helped me significantly improve all of my mixed games. And I contribute a lot of my success to what he has taught me. Well, you know, we love John Snudo over here in this space, and and hopefully we're spreading his name enough and tagging enough people that he's going to get the nod for the Hall of Fame this year. Uh, we all know he's very well deserving, and um, we hope that happens. And I hope that anytime somebody sees a tweet of mentioning John for that Hall of Fame nod, that you retweet it and tag people like Dean Eggs, Phil Helmuth, Linda Johnson, Mike Matisau, you know, any of them, Jan Fisher, um, so that we can continue to campaign for his induction, which of course is most deserving. Um, I really admire what he's done at the poker table. His story is amazing. Um, Kathy, can you tell us about the hand you won in your heads up play that gave you the title and your first WSOP ring? Oh, it's all such a blur, but you know, I came into day two of that horse event third in chips. And by the time we got to the final three, I had a huge stack. And so when we got to heads up, I mean, I was probably, I had like 90% of the chips. And so it was just, he was all in and, and it, it really, you know, wasn't that significant of a hand for that final hand. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate that update on that. Uh, you know, when you're crushing it and you have most of the chips, I guess it uh, makes poker a lot easier. Um, I'm going to give our panel a chance to ask some questions now. So let's start with our guest uh, co-host, Maureen. Sorry. Okay. Hi, Kathy. And congratulations. Hi, congratulations again on all your recent successes. I could only congratulate you via social media. Thank you, Maureen. It's great to talk to you on here. Yeah. Um, so I have a question. What is your summer schedule looking like? Um, what games are you planning to play? Um, and will you also be playing the Mixed Game Festival or just concentrating on WSOP? Okay, so as far as WSOP bracelet events, I'll probably play about six of them, all mixed games, mostly the 1500s, um, horse 08, stud 8, deuce to 7, triple draw. And one PLO mix. I'll also be playing some events at at the various other casinos, Aria, Win, um, Venetian. Orleans has a huge mixed game schedule, so I'll be playing a lot of those. As far as the mixed game festival, I have played it previously. Um, this year, I believe they're focusing on cash games, so I probably won't be playing too much of that. However, I did play a lot of mixed game cash games on the WPT Voyage with Robbie and everyone, and we had such a great time on that. Yes, for sure. I think Robbie's a great teacher. He taught me a couple of mixed games, but I still need to learn more. <laughs> Okay. And after the WSOP, do you have any poker plans? Well, I will continue on with with poker, probably not at the same pace, but we'll focus on the on the summer and see how it goes. I asked my family for this one year to do poker, you know, as much as I could. And as of now, for the first five months, I'm already almost near the the record of my um, career caches. Um, last year, I, I cashed over 50,000, and I'm, I think, in the high 40s up to now. And so I, I would hope to have my best year this year. However, with all my family responsibilities, I, I probably can't continue on this pace, but I'm very happy that I have the opportunity to play as much poker as I can this year, and I'm having a lot of fun. 
You know, you brought up a very valid point, and that's the support of those in your inner circle. It's very important. Otherwise, the wheels on the bus fall off. <laughs> Go ahead, Maureen. Um, I think that's all for now. If someone yeah. else has questions, yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Um, um, Sherry, Sherry knows that all too well. She's been uh, talking me out of the... Uh, the the shootout on <laughs> Friday. I'm just kidding. Because anyway, it's his um, gra daughter's graduation day. Yep. Let's make it for the record now. And, and and she's here with me. She's nodding her head. No poker. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, Kathy, um, I wanted to ask you if you were seeing today, like you did back, um, and I think you said 2000 eight um anyway the the uh the program and you wanted to play poker and this kind of thing what what advice would you give to people you mean how to get started in poker as a beginner yeah yeah well you know today we have a lot more resources than i did when i started out but um honestly during uh the pandemic i sat at home and i play it online, the Poker Stars free mixed games, and I just practiced and practiced and practiced. I read every book I could find. I have over 100 books in my library. I mean, now books are rather outdated, but at the time when I started, that's really what all I had. And then I also did some poker boot camps with WSOP and WPT, got some, some coaching. Um, now we have a lot of free online resources. We have various groups, and I've joined all of the groups. I really appreciate all the ladies' groups for all the support, especially Pocket Queens. I have to do a shout-out for Pocket Queens. If you are a woman in poker, this is an excellent resource for a lot of poker content. But for me, you know, it's it's a lot of the, the moral support that I get. Also, other groups like Rec Poker, that are just really a great resource for for recreational players and you know we learn together we i play for fun and you know it's a lot more fun when you have a community and you're you're sharing ideas and you're supporting each other and i i i started a a mixed game online league with Pocket Queens, it's free for the members. And each week we play a different, each month we play a different mixed game. And so it's a great way to, to learn in a supportive and comfortable environment. And we have prizes for, for the winners. And it's just a, a fun way to, to learn. And so this is what I am sharing with the group because this is what I wanted when I was a beginner. And so there's a lot of things like this where you can practice for free or for a small amount and get comfortable in those various games. I love that. And I kind of feel like our spaces community, uh, we're doing kind of the same thing on a um, different um, scale or level or even different content, but it's all about the support. We rail like Brian um, had a big run last week in the freeze out. He came in 12th. We railed him, supported him. Um, when somebody's having, you know, issues, we support them in, in their real lives. Uh, we talk about poker, not just only in our daily show, but in other spaces that are happening throughout the day. Um, we support poker, try to talk about different things and, and try to learn from each other. And I think that support is huge. And Pocket Queens is doing a great job with that. So kudos to them. Go yes. ahead, Brian. Any more questions? Oh, Kathy, did you have something to add? Well, I wanted to say that I really appreciate all of the support of all of my friends and the poker community for my recent success. And especially that I won my first circuit ring at Commerce, which is my home casino. And just the, the outpouring of support there has been fantastic. I also wanna say the outpouring of support from 
Great Ten and Thunder Valley, two amazing casinos. If you all haven't been there, I highly recommend it. They run a great show over there. And I've just been very blessed with all of the positive feedback that I've been receiving. I love that so much. That is awesome to hear. And I'm glad so many folks are supporting you as they should. Donna, do you have any questions or comments for Kathy? I just want to say hi, Kathy. Welcome to the spaces. Hello. Uh, and some, some amazing cashiers. <laughs> no, I'm not hey, saying Brian. Is it over I'm driving. Okay, Brian, time out. Brian, you yes. can't hear her, so just stand by for a minute. Go ahead, Donna. I'm driving still. I've still not got back home yet. But I think it's awesome that you've come on and that you are doing this to spread more awareness. And I wish you the very best of luck in the WSOP. And I will be railing from over in the UK. Thank you. So I thank really you. Apologies it's, so, apologies, it's so short. I'm still driving. It's like school run time for me over in the UK. <laughs> and poor Brian, he's trying to help us out, but he can't hear you. He's gone out and come back in. Hopefully um, we're going to, he'll be okay. And his technology is going to kick in and, and hopefully, you know, Twitter will do better. Brian, you there, bud? Yeah, I'm back. Okay, perfect. No worries. Um, and thank you for those kind words, Donna. Um, go ahead, Brian. Questions for Kathy. So um, are, you're playing mainly just, well, I guess you said you play both, right? T tournaments and cash games. I play mostly <laughs> tournaments. I just play cash for fun a little bit at the at the cruise. But I, I prefer tournaments. And I play I play mostly mixed game tournaments and the you know, lower, mid buy-ins. Um, I just feel like I, that that is where I've been doing well. I, I still also play No Limit, mostly in the ladies' events. I really enjoy that. So, you know, I, I, I play what, what I feel will be fun and profitable, hopefully. And where's your favorite place to play? Well, in Las Vegas, it would be the win. Of course, they do everything right. It's a beautiful resort, and they they have all the latest and greatest. I especially appreciate the fact that they recently got set up with Poker Atlas. Um, Poker Atlas is the best thing that's happened to poker, and I wish that everybody would have that. Thunder Valley has Poker Atlas, and it just makes the tournament experience so much better. A little so shout out to uh, yeah. Justin Hammer, who was just in here, and he's in charge of that uh, Poker Atlas tour. So go ahead. Sorry. Oh, neat. Um, and, and you know, Sherry, they have that, I think they have that drink there at the uh, <laughs> win, the uh, Strawberry Julius that, uh, that my Sean favorite refuses to bring male back. Male co-host that my fa sorry. favorite male co-host enjoys. <laughs> yeah, and and then also in California, like I said, um, Commerce is my my home casino. So um, it's obviously in LA. It's a, it's an hour plus drive for me, but that is the closest casino to me. And of course, LAPC has always been you know great. And now that they have the circuit in LA, I am really looking forward to a lot more of uh, good poker in LA. And then, as I mentioned, um, Thunder Valley and Grayton, I really enjoy what they do there, the mixed games especially. And so I do travel to Northern California, which is an hour on the plane, and it's, it's well worth a visit to there. Awesome. I'm going to mention some names. And if you can give us some comments or even a story about the person I mentioned, that would be awesome. And feel free to say pass if necessary. <laughs> and we, there's no shame in that game. Believe me, Doyle Brunson. Okay, Doyle Brunson, I really don't know very well. I appreciate what he's done for poker. Um, I would have to pass on this one. I wish I had met him and known him. And those are great comments because many of us feel the same way. Phil Helmuth. Okay, Phil, <laughs> Phil, I have a lot of stories about Phil. Um, he, he definitely was at my table at the ring event 
And so uh, we we just get to talk a little bit there. We've we've played many times at LA and at World Series. Um, last year at the World Series, he came in late reg the 08, and I said to him, perhaps you should get your next hat ready. You know how he wears the number of bracelets he's won on his hat. Right. And I, so I mentioned to him, maybe you should get your next hat ready because your next bracelet is coming. And he said, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. And, of course, then soon after that, he did win his next bracelet. So that was a funny one. But the funniest thing is that um, every time I ask him, I take pictures with him, we talk a lot, and I ask him, do you remember my name? And, of course, he stumbles and fumbles, and he always forgets. But the reason that this is so funny is because his wife is also Kathy. And so I feel like he really should not forget my name. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. But I now, won. you know, after I won the, the circuit ring at Commerce, he did congratulate me, he gave me a high five. And, you know, I did ask him, how many rings does he have? And, of course, you know, he has the most bracelets. But he doesn't play a lot of ring events. And so now I can say I have more circuit rings than Phil Helmuth. I love that. That's and right. I just want to say to you that when we meet in person, I just want you to say, where is your hat with the number one on the side of it? So that a few days later, I will win <laughs> my first bracelet. You know, I'm going to go make a hat for myself. <laughs> that is funny. I, now, may hear, about, I may steal that, Sherry. I love that. Um, how about Linda Johnson? Oh, Linda Johnson is fantastic. I've met her years ago, and she she's just been phenomenal. She's just great, uh, such a great role model for women in poker. And you know, we we've had some really good times. Um, we did play some some mixed game cash games. You know, we've I've seen her at many of these lips events, and I I would love to go on one of the cruises with them. I think that would be so much fun. Me too. I'm looking forward to it for sure. How about Jeff Lissandro? Jeff Lissandro, I don't know very well, but I did meet him one time down at Hollywood Park. Um, he was hosting a, a game there, and I do have his book, which I haven't read, but I do have it, and so maybe I'll have to read that sometime. Which I'm going to just say that I gave away a, a copy of it a few weeks ago, and I have read it, and it's it's a fun book. I, I definitely recommend that book. How about Jan Fisher? Oh, Jan Fisher's the best. I love her. She is so awesome. She's she's hilarious and she's fun, but she's also serious and she's so very supportive. There was this one time where I was having a, a bad day, not for poker, but some other reason. And she saw that I wasn't happy that day. And she came and she talked to me and she cheered me up and for that, I'm forever grateful. I feel like, you know, it's it's those kinds of things where you see the person not as a poker player, but as a human being. And when I needed somebody, she was there. And she doesn't even really know that she did this. But <laughs> I did t I did thank her later that, that that was an important moment for me. And I appreciate what she did. Well, and, you know... Um, that speaks volumes of, about her, and it's awesome. And I've just got a little story about Jan. I think the world of Jan, and I don't think there's anybody, well, there probably are, but I'm just going to say, it, I don't think there is anybody that can commentate a live event like Jan. She is hilarious. She has great stories. Um, one time I played uh, an event at Best Bet in Jacksonville a few years ago, and it was a ladies' event, and she was seat seated to my left. And I'm just going to tell you, it was like having the principal sitting at your left. Because <laughs> you were, everybody at that table was like, what do I say? What do I do? Is she going to say something to me? Is she going to correct me? And we happened to have somebody at that table that was just acting nuts. And Jan kept whispering to me, what is she doing? Why is she doing? This? And I just would laugh. And I was trying to give the person that was acting crazy, like the eye, like, uh, you know, you're winding Jan up here. And I'm not thinking that's a good idea. It was so funny. We, we just, 
teased her and said, you know, you're like having the principal at our table. But anyway, love Jan Fisher. She's done so much for the world of poker. Great uh, storyteller. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, it's really neat, you know, Sherry, like just the, just how you have all these people that have, that, you know, love the game, but they, it's not just like they went out and, you know, went into the poker room, exploitive, uh, you know, play just zero sum game. They've like actually gone and tried to build the game and welcome new people in and, and uh, you know, just be, be those people that, I mean, I know Jan and um, and Linda. Linda, Linda, yeah, both of, both of them. I mean, have done an absurd amount of work. I I don't know if there's been like a big financial benefit to it for them or not. I seem to remember them in a lot of volunteer kind of things. So um, you let know, me just, just say that they're not hurting. They're not hurting, and they they are definitely reaping well, the benefits of their hard work in the poker world, but you're right. They do a feed the hungry every Monday night through poker wow. gives on the streets of Vegas every That's Monday crazy. night. And if you live in Vegas uh, or if you're visiting Vegas on a Monday night, they always need people um, out on the street. They have a specific location where they feed every Monday night and they always need volunteers to help fill the plates. So they definitely do lots of volunteer stuff in our community, and it's awesome. They're always being great stewards, and they're always being great leaders. So hats off well, to both of those ladies. And I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of what you know. What I mean is the stuff that they do, like for poker. I don't think that a lot of that is a direct cash thing for them. It's a lot volunteer and stuff like that i definitely see i think both of them over in the the king's lounge playing you know high limit games and stuff like that so well I'm and sure let me you... just I, i'm just gonna um i'm just gonna say as a blanket statement i'm not referring to the king's lounge appearances at all just as a blanket statement they do get paid for appearances yeah so um well, they've, and that's they've not earned it. I'm sure they look. put in a lot of, lot of Hell years yeah. of, yeah. of, of freebies. And of course. And they <laughs> so, still do. And they still yes. do. So I don't want that. Like, I'm not saying they're not. But I also want to recognize that they do get, you know, paid for appearances. And what those appearances are or how much, I don't know. And I don't care. Because guess what? They've earned their place. For and sure. they, they are pioneers in the world of poker that have laid the payments pavement for the rest of us in so many ways that we'll never even know all the ways. Uh, Maureen, yep. any more questions for Kathy before we start winding this down? No, everything was great. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, it was nice to hear your story. Um, I learned some new things about you today as well. Um, good luck this summer and I will see you in Las Vegas. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, I do have another question for you, Kathy. Would you like to share any stories about any particular experience in the poker world? Oh, there's there's so many stories. I mean, I just really appreciate why I love live tournament poker so much is that I just appreciate meeting so many great people. And I really can't think of any uh, particular story right at this time, but I do want to thank a lot of the people that have shown me the way and have, have made poker a positive experience for me. Well, and I love that. And, um, you know, when you're in a life like you live of traveling and playing poker, playing on a local level, I'm sure you have 10,000 stories a week. And guess what? I hope one day you sit down and write some of those stories in a book so we have a chance to enjoy those stories in the future, Kathy. Thank you. For sure. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, thank you for, for joining us today. I really appreciate your your perspectives and uh, hearing your story. It's it's. Uh, really great that's what that's what poker is all about for me is 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 just 
just the story, you know, like everybody has a story and it's, it's, you know, obviously everybody wants to win, right. And everybody wants to make money or bracelets or whatever your motivation is, but, uh, you know, the experience and is, is biggest for me. So, um, just, just getting to hear your experiences and things like that has been great. Really appreciate you. Thank you, Brian. You know, I just really want to say that I want to see more women in poker. And I think mixed games is, is really a nice way for women to to join poker. It's a friendly group. It's smaller fields. You know, there's a lot of variety. I mean, I never knew anything about Deuce to Seven Triple Draw, but now all of a sudden Deuce to Seven Triple Draw is my new favorite. And... You know, you just meet a lot of great people along the way and you go to different places. And I really am trying hard to to welcome women into mixed games. And that is what I'm passionate about. And I hope that more people will join me in this. I love that. Um, the fact that you're taking on an ambassador role to promote that is amazing. What, if you had to recommend to a new player to the mixed game scene, what game would you recommend be the first game that they pick up in the mixed game category? Well, like I said, I I started with uh, Limit Omaha, High, Low, 8, or Better. I think that's that's a good one to start. It's, It's fun. It's easy to pick up. And you know, there's a lot of 08 and 08 variants available. You know, some of these other games like Badugi may not be as popular. It may not be as available. So, you know, Omaha and, and Study, those are probably the ones that I would start with. So if you were to teach me um, something about um, Limit Omaha, High Low, um, eight or better what tell me i don't know two or three things that you would say to me as a new player that would help me um get started in that in that genre well the goal in split pot games is to scoop so you want to have a a hand that would be you know high potential and low potential so in games like limit 08 Definitely the ace deuce is a strong holding so that you could you could make a wheel possibly and that would be the high, that could be the low, you know, so that you could scoop. But sometimes, you know, players get excited about an all high hand, you know, ace, king, queen, jack. And that could only win the high potentially. There's no low potential in that. So you want to start with good hands that could make a high and a low. Great recommendation. Love that. I think it's great advice. Um, Maybe one day I'll be at that table. Hopefully not with you, but uh, (laughs) only because you're Give it a try, Sherry. I'm not ready You never know. You never know. (laughs) It might be, you know, one day the light bulb came on for me and, you know, one day everything fit. I mean, sometimes you got to start, I mean, I will say this, you know, I, I've been playing the piano my whole life. And at the beginning, I'm seven years old. I have to practice scales. I have to practice for an hour. No seven-year-old wants to sit there all day. But one day, you start making music, and it becomes fun. And then, and then all of a sudden, it's not your parents' idea. It's, it's, it's my idea, and I enjoy it. And I, I play for myself, but I play for others. And you know, it just makes your life more enjoyable. And this is kind of how I saw poker. Like in the in the beginning, you just kind of have to go through the motions and you have to kind of put the reps in and you have to see hands and you have to play games and, and you're going to suffer a lot of losses. And, you know, most of the time poker, you do lose. So that's part of the game. But then all of a sudden, you know, things start happening and everything falls your way and, and, and once in a while, you find yourself winning. And, and then that's why we come and we play. I mean, that's why I come and play, because, you know, it's a challenge. And, and, and sometimes you get rewarded for that. 
I totally agree. And I think those are great words of wisdom. Thank you for sharing them with, with me and our listeners. And I want to let everybody know that's, that is listening. If you'd like to come up and ask Kathy a question or chat with her, now's the time. Press the button in the bottom left corner and we will bring you up to um, ask questions or make any comments that you might have. Donna, welcome back. You got lost in the matrix. Are you there? Yeah, I'm still in the home yet, and I've just seen the firefight. <laughs> Uh-oh, she's so I'm a bit distracted. It's like, screw. <laughs> she said, screw Sherry and Brian and Maureen's spaces. Sorry, Kathy, but I got a fireman to chase, is what she's saying. Screw. <laughs> Oh. Go, Donna, get that contract out. Get him to sign it. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, you know, I, I I think I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up today. And it's kind of going to sidetrack us for just a minute. And I also want to give time in case anybody wants to come up, they can request. But, you know, there was a little bit of a back and forth on Facebook uh, with a ladies group and, and some ladies. And I'm just going to say as a general statement, um, we all need to do better. Like if we have an issue, you know, let's discuss it, discuss it as mature adults, not attack each other, not belittle each other, and maybe not even call each other, you know, someone out by their name, right? Uh, general statements, and I'm not saying anybody here has done that. I'm just saying it in general because I think it is something that we have to continue to remind each other and ourselves of that, hey, it is okay to voice your opinion. It's okay to comment on someone voicing their opinion. It is not okay to attack them personally. Let's have adult conversations, and I'm getting off my soapbox right now. <laughs> You know, Sherry, I want to say that I'm I'm a participant of all the ladies groups, and my goal is to elevate women in poker and support all women in poker, and we all have a common goal. We want to be more than 5% of the field. We want to have some winners, and I see that soon we're going to have a woman winning that main event. It's, it's coming soon. The women that are playing are all fantastic, and we all just need – we're – Positive attitude. If there's one thing you get from this, I think positive attitude is the best thing that you can do for yourself. I, I actually did come up with a story, Sherry. So if you don't mind, I have a No, story. please do. Please do. Okay. So, so after I won that California State, I, I learned that Arizona was having a state ladies championship in 2013. And so I went over there. And I think I was probably the only one from California that was playing the Arizona State. But... Um, they had a, a display case. It was kind of like a museum display case of, of a bracelet that they were giving for that event. And so I took a photo of that. And I was playing the tournament. It was a two-day event. I was wearing a, just a, a simple bracelet, you know, an inexpensive you know, charm bracelet. And it broke. And so I was trying to fix it. And the floor person came to me and she said, don't worry about that bracelet. You're going to win a new one today. And I was like, wow. You know, it was in the middle of the tournament. I had average stack. You know, we had a long way to go. I didn't think much of it. But then I bagged and, you know, we made it to, to day two and things were going great. And all of a sudden I find myself at the final table and, uh, you know, I did really well, and I knocked out most everybody on that final table, and I found myself winning that that bracelet. And so I'm like, wow, that was just really amazing that she would say such a thing to me. And that that was one of the highlights of my poker to this point was winning the Arizona State Ladies Championship, with, and that's the, the bracelet that I have so far. And I, ho I hope that that will lead to a WSOP bracelet one day. I love that story for so many reasons. Uh, and I think probably one of the most important reasons is somebody just supporting someone else with some kind words and a great gesture of planting that seed that today you're going to be a winner. And I love that. That's amazing. Thank you. 
and it came to fruition, which makes it a thousand times better, isn't it? Just like when Brian, you know, Brian did a staking thing and there's four of us that are now the top recipients of that staking deal through contests. There are four of us. We're going to share 5% of his summer's winnings. And we were talking about the other day, wouldn't it be fun for him not only to win a bracelet because he's been trying and he's, you know, gotten close several times, but for um, the bragging rights that, hey, you guys could have been a part of this too if you had just played the trivia game with us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so since you brought up staking, I do have to shout out to Poker Stake. Uh, this is my first year that I've been selling action for my poker. And honestly, I'm, I'm in there with all the pros, and they're all in there with the high rollers. And, and I'm grateful that I get to be a part of this, that I get to sell, sell my action. And I really appreciate all the support that I've received, that almost all of my action has sold out quickly months ahead of of my events and you know i i'm playing now for for myself but i'm also playing for others and i appreciate the support of everyone well and i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell myself that i'm a staker for kathy um through that site and it is just fun to be able to stake someone but i want you guys to listen to what's in my background hold on a minute I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, we can hear it. Uh, but she, she has Yay. been on the struggle bus. And Aww. I'm going to try to um, end this space so maybe I can go give some relief to mommy or daddy. I don't know who's down there trying to take care of her. But it's been going on for about 20 minutes. And it's really hard for me to focus knowing that mm, maybe I should go help. Um, so I am um, sorry, Kathy, but I think I'm going to cut this a little bit oh, short. Oh, no, it's been great. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I, I'm quite honored that uh, you invited me to do this. And I, I just love talking about poker and meeting new people and and spreading the word about mixed games. And I hope that everyone crushes it this summer. And, and shout out to all the ladies that have done so well. Um, my other three winners, the women winners at, at uh, Commerce, um, we had four winners that were women at the circuit event. And I think that's fantastic. I want to see more of that. So shout out to all of them. It was exciting to see all those female winners at the commerce event. That was for, you know, certain. And, and it certainly is fun to watch your successes. And um, I would hope that you would join us in the mornings and come give us some updates or just visit with us or hang out and listen. We'd love to have you with us every morning or whenever you can get here, Kathy. Well, I hope to have some more good news for you soon. Well, we look forward to it. And I'm sorry, you guys, but I'm going to cut it short because real life is calling. Love you all and um, have a blessed day as well as a lucky day on the felt. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye.